Now, you might be thinking, what? right, how does the observation framework work with Swift Concurrency? And I'll be real with you, you know I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to have a video for this. I mean, is the elephant heavy? <laughs> Well, in this video, we're actually going to see how we can build an affirmations app that gives us new affirmations every time we shake our phone. We'll use the observation framework along with Swift Concurrency to tackle topics like fetching data, error handling, handling UI updates on the main thread, and a lot more. So feel free to check out the rest of this course and the source code down below. Let's get this money. All right, cool. So we just actually look at our project here. You can see that I'm actually running this on the simulator. Now, the reason why I'm using that and not the Swift UI previews is because we need to actually shake the device to you know simulate a fetching a new affirmation. So we just got our content view here and we got our gradient color, but you'll see that the device here by using the shake action, we simulate us fetching some data and you know showing a new affirmation. And we also have an animation in here as well. So we're actually using the new phase animator framework to help us get this animation every time we simulate a shake. So what we actually want to do here is actually add in the API rather than us faking it as if we're fetching some data. And if you want to learn more about APIs, I do have a free course on my channel that actually goes all over this that you can check out. Now, if you want to follow along and access the starter code for all of this, so you can get basically a base template for this to add into your apps, maybe you can access that down below in the link as well on my Gumroad page. So what we want to do is we want to actually use a real life API for this. Now for that, I've actually found this API called the affirmations one here on this JSON API app. Now this is a free API, so it's probably not as extensive, but it's just to show you an example of us using this in our apps. So if we go into Postman, and if you want to learn about Postman, you guessed it. I've got a video on that as well. You can see here that I'm just calling this API with a get request. And you can see all it simply gives us back is a affirmation key with a value of some affirmation. So every time you hit this endpoint, it actually gives you a brand new affirmation every single time. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. So going back into our project, the first thing we actually want to do here is when you're working with APIs, you need to actually define some kind of model. So I'm going to create a new file for holding our API models, which is going to be our response from our, you know, JSON request. So let's create a new file. And we'll just call it API models. And within this file, we're just going to basically create these structs that we're going to use to decode our JSON data. So I'll add it in and we'll break it down. So when I'm working with APIs, I like to call my models um, response on the end. So it's clear that this is not a model for some data. It's actually specifically for an API. And we're using the codable um, protocol here. And we just define our key affirmation. So it's pretty straightforward so far. So make sure you actually stick around because we're going to go into more detail about how we can actually fetch data using this and the um, observation framework as well as also updating our UI and handling error messaging and a lot of other things as well that we're going to cover. So if you're enjoying this video so far and you like my teaching style, I'd actually really appreciate it if you shared this video. Also as well, leave a comment down below to let me know, you know, what you're enjoying about this video so far, what you'd like to see from me in the future. And also as well, you can like, subscribe, as well as hit the notification bell to get updates so you don't miss any of my videos that I release on this channel. So now we actually need to set up our code for actually fetching our data. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a brand new file called Affirmations Manager. So we're just going to here, and um, we'll just say File New, and I'll just create this out. So we just have our, you know, skeleton here, which is what we're going to use for actually observing our data in our view. And also we've all got a function here using async await to actually help us fetch our data as well. And if you want to learn more about Swift Concurrency, I've got a video on my channel that pretty much covers everything that you need to know as well. So within this fetch function, this is where we're actually going to write the code now to actually help us make the API request. So I want to use URL session within here to fetch this data. Nothing too fancy here. All we're literally doing is just creating a URL request, using URL session to fetch that data, decoding our response back from the API. And then for now, we're just putting our result in some kind of constant that's local to this function. I mentioned before that we actually want this to be a object where we actually observe changes. So right now, when we actually get our data, we just have it local to this function. It's not being used anywhere else. So what we actually need instead is a property within this manager that our UI can listen to. So we're actually going to look at using the observable macro and creating some properties to actually link that data to our UI. The first thing we're going to do here is just import observation. And then we need to actually mark our class here with the at observable macro as well. So we can actually use our state later on to treat this as the source of truth. 
Now we want a property in here to actually help us hold the affirmations rather than it just being in a constant. So I'm going to create a private set property in here now. Now you might be wondering why did I make this private set? And the reason why is because I only want this property to be able to be changed within the scope of this class. We don't need it to be changed outside and you know cause some weird side effects. So we're locking it down. Rather than us actually just doing this locally within our you know local scope here, we want to update this to be self dot affirmation like so. And now we actually have the base of our code here in terms of what it is that we want to work with. Now in our content view, if you look at it, we don't actually use any kind of, you know, data. It's just all hard coded strings. That one is actually like faking it. Let's actually now use our actual affirmation manager within this content view. But we'll need to create an instance of that within this content view. When you're working with observable objects, you'll know that we have to use the state property wrapper to actually help us create a source of truth in this content view. And then the scrolling down, the next thing we want to do is rather than it saying affirmation here, we'll actually want to use the property within our manager. So let's just remove this hard-coded string and we'll instead say manager dot affirmation like so. And then if we keep scrolling down, you'll notice as well that we have this property here called is loading. Now this is loading is actually tied to the content view. Instead of us doing that in the content view, we could actually just move this directly into our manager so we can observe whether it's loading within there. So let's just do that. So back in our affirmations manager, we'll create a brand new property in here called is loading. And by default, it will be false because before you fetch it, it's not actually loading. So we'll set it to false. So within our fetch function now, what we want to do is when we actually call this function, the first thing we want to do is actually set is loading to true because it's going to start loading. And then whenever everything's finished, we actually want to call it, well, set it back to false because it's not loading anymore. And a nice way to do that is to use the defer keyword here and just simply say is loading is equal to false like so, cool. And I've got this warning here that's annoying me. So I'm just gonna hit underscore because we don't use the response. So let's build that, boom. All right, it's looking good, sweet. So back in our content view, wherever we have is loading, we're going to replace that with or remove it with what we have in our manager. So we don't need this state property anymore. So we'll take this out. And then you'll see here that we use is loading. So we'll replace that with manager that is loading. And then we'll do that again. So we'll you listen to our manager. And then where we actually, you know, set these values here, we don't have that no more. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. And then we'll also use is loading for on the manager as well. Cool. So if you just build this, you'll see that it succeeds. So now we've got our source of truth that we're going to listen to for our affirmation and also as well for whether our view is loading. Another thing that we did was we now actually hooked up our text to some actual data that relies on code that's going to be executed on a background thread. So when you're actually fetching data from an API, it doesn't automatically go on the main thread because that will actually block your UI if the request takes too long. So by default, it's on a background thread. And then when you make the updates, it puts it back onto the main thread. Going into our affirmation manager though, you'll see here that normally if you're used to working with async await, you normally are used to just adding the at main actor on your class. So everything that interacts with a piece of UI automatically gets put onto the main thread. Now if we actually build our project, you'll see we'll actually get an error on our state where we actually try to create an object using a state property wrapper. Now this is something when you're working with the observable that hasn't been resolved yet. And there's a couple of ways around this. So one thing I found is that you can't use the main actor and the observable macros together. So how do we, you know, what are some alternatives to make sure that our UI is always on the main thread? So let's remove this. And the first way you could actually approach this is on your actual function itself, you could apply the main actor macro to it. And if we build our project now, you'll see that our error actually goes away. So what will happen now is that if you have different functions, you can actually decorate them each and put the main actor annotation on it. An alternative to this is you can also use the main actor closure and actually choose to run a piece of code on it as well. And we could do that on this line here where we say main actor dot run. And then in the body of this closure, we will just set our affirmations. So now, we would make sure that our UI is always being ran on the main actor. So in my opinion, 
um, it just depends on which one you want to go with. Me personally, I'm not a fan of doing this. I actually just prefer to just add the annotation to the functions that need any kind of UI updates on the main thread. So now we actually have all of this stuff in place. Now we need to actually call this function to fetch the actual affirmation itself. Now going to our content. Now we need to call our function to actually fetch, you know, a new affirmation whenever someone shakes the device. Now I've got this modifier here that I built within the project. If you check out the entire source code, which actually triggers an action whenever you shake your phone. Right now, we're just calling our dispatch queue to simulate an API request. But what we want to do here instead is actually execute our function to fetch the affirmation. Let's replace this with a task. And then before we actually, you know, enter the trigger for animation we want to fetch the affirmation first and then start the animation so before this we'll say manager dot fetch and because we're in a task here we'll need to use the await keyword like so all right now if we was to run this and test this out on a simulator you'll see that we get our shake for and affirmation here which is what we want and if i just shake this device You'll see we get our spinner and we'll also as well get our animation and isn't it ironic that it says 10 X engineers are amazing. <laughs> if there wasn't a more perfect timing, this is the correct affirmation as well. <laughs> right, okay. So let's shake that. Also, that was not planned. That was completely unexpected. But hey, hey, this app tells the truth, right? <laughs> so let's shake again. And you know, we'll keep on getting that and we get our nice animation as well. So this is looking good so far. But as we're using our apps, you should know by now that not everything goes to plan. You know, sometimes things just do go left. And what I mean by that is, you know, maybe your connection drops, you're, you know, under a tunnel or something and you don't have great connection. Right now, we don't actually handle if things go wrong. So let's actually see how we can do error handling. So in order to actually simulate some kind of error handling, I'm just going to temporarily just go into our operation manager and I'm just going to purposely mess up this URL so we can see what an error looks like. Now, if we run our project again and we shake our device this time, you'll see that when something goes wrong and you can see here in our console, we just get a blank screen. What we actually want to do instead is actually show someone or give them some kind of like helper to tell them what they need to do. Now, in our case, we're just going to keep it simple and just say that they should like retry. So in our efforts, many in our affirmations manager here, we want to create a new property to actually, you know, capture if there has been an error or not. So I'm going to do this now. And I hope you're starting to see a bit of a pattern here where when I have properties that I don't need to change outside of the view, we just mark them as private set. Now we're in this function here. When something goes wrong, we want to set our has error to either true. Um, and if it hasn't, then we want to set it to false. So by default, when we're fetching, nothing's actually gone wrong yet. So we'll make sure that has error is equal to false. And then if something does go wrong specifically in our catch block here, we'll set our has error is equal to true. We've got our properties that we can observe here. So back in our content view, we'll now want to actually use this property. So let's go into our content view and I'm just going to create another overlay here where we show some kind of text on the screen if has error is equal to true. So on the screen, we've now got a V stack with some styles on it. But the main part that we have here is down below is we have our opacity is going to dictate whether we show our error message on the UI and something that we're going to animate on the screen. Let's run this and we'll shake our device again. And you'll see that we now set something telling us that something's gone wrong. We should actually shake to retry. So we have to keep on retrying. You'll see that the color does change, but our text doesn't actually, you know, update. So it's telling us to keep on retrying. Let's go back into our affirmations manager. And this time we'll fix the URL and we'll run the project again. We'll shake our device. And you'll see everything's all good. So you can see that we've actually covered quite a few things here in this video. And you've actually got yourself, if you want to put this on the App Store, your own affirmations app, which is pretty cool. So if you're actually enjoying this video, I mean, feel free to subscribe, share it and like, like I said before. But this is actually the 
pause of this course because what we're going to do with these type of courses is we're going to keep on adding new things to them every single time you actually get all the source code without any additional cost every time there's an update to the observation framework so i hope you enjoyed this course i hope you learned a lot of things as well and if you want to check out the rest of my courses you can check them out on my youtube channel and on my Deuces. website as well that's everything from me i'll catch you all in a bit deuces